Gene, uh, you're writing about the shooting of Jacob Blake this morning. What do you see in that video? Um, what I see in that video is just awful, um, Willie. I mean, and, and I don't see everything in the video. You don't, you, you can't see what what happens at the at the moment of the shooting you can't see whether there is something anything um that that he does when he enters the car that 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 causes this police officer to instantly fire seven uh seven shots uh toward his back at at um, point blank range but but what i see is an incident um, that, that started as a domestic dispute. It's all, already been allowed to spiral out of control. And so he's walking around the front of the car. Jacob Blake is away from the police officers, and the officers are trailing him with their guns drawn, pointed at him. Um, what in the world? Uh, how, how do you get from, uh, from domestic dispute to that he's, he doesn't have a weapon. He, he's he's not um, threatening the officers in in any way at that moment that we can see. Um, uh, you know, I see um, a, a reason a reason for why Black Lives Matter is one of the great themes of this year, uh, and and why it's going to stick around. It's going to continue to be uh, near the forefront of our consciousness because things like this keep happening. There's just no, you know, a domestic dispute and it, and it ends that way. There's something wrong with the mindset uh, that went into that encounter, the mindset on the part of the police that went into that encounter uh, that let it get to that point. And, um, and it's a tragic point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jonathan Capehart, as I mentioned, Jacob Blake is in serious condition. Uh, we certainly hope he's doing better. We hope to God he survives that shooting. Uh, and I mentioned his three children, ages three, five, and eight, inside that vehicle uh, when the shooting took place. It's interesting as you watch that video and you watch the scene unfold in Kenosha, Wisconsin, Jonathan, and you listen to the speeches last night in the Republican National Convention, and it was about cities on fire. And that's always sort of been Donald Trump's takeaway from the movement we've seen for racial justice in the streets is that it is anti-police and that it leads to looting. And we heard all about that again last night, cities on fire, rather than focusing on the message and why people are focused on scenes like we saw in Kenosha. Yeah, before we came on, I was reading our story in the Washington Post about the convention, and this line from Mrs. McCloskey's speech leapt out at me, and it's relevant to this conversation right now. She said, when we don't have basic safety and security in our communities, we'll never be free to build a brighter future for ourselves, for our children, or for our country. What do you say to the Blake family? Why doesn't that apply to the to those three children in the back seat of that car? Why doesn't it apply to that community? Why doesn't it apply to the families of Tamir Rice and Ahmad Arbery, um, Trayvon Martin, Brianna Taylor, Botham John? Why doesn't that sentiment that the McCloskeys thundered during their their Republican convention speech, why doesn't that apply to all Americans? And particularly, why doesn't it apply to black Americans who certain for since we got here in 16 or brought here in 1619 have been living under the same threat, the same fear. And yet the McCloskeys, the president, the Republican Party, all those folks who spoke last night seem willing to turn a blind eye to people who are scared and tired, and tired of being hunted. And that is what we saw um, in that video of what happened to, to Jacob Blake. And that's why watching the convention speeches last night was like watching um, a signal come in from Earth 2, that for folks who are, were giving those speeches and for the De Republican National Committee, the things that we're talking about right now don't exist uh, or um, aren't even important. And it is beyond troubling right. to me that, you know, the president can get away with speaking solely to his narrow base, yet the, yet the Democrats would have been wildly criticized 
if they had not taken the time during their convention to reach out beyond their base, which is exactly what they did. Um, we've got three more nights of what we saw last night. And what happened to Mr. Blake and what we're going to see over the, the course of the Republican convention are two, not two different Americas, two completely different realities. Yeah, two different sets of realities. One of those realities, by the way, is overwhelmingly supported by 25 percent of Americans, which, again, if you look at all of the polls uh, this summer since the death of George Floyd, uh, Donald Trump has been trying uh, to stoke racial animus as much as possible. His tweets early on talking about the fierce, horrible dogs that were going to go out and eat protesters, or however he said it, and talking about the incredible force that was going to be used against protesters, talking about riots. Remember the one that he started on June the 1st? Uh, that was uh, I, uh, very fascinating, that the president would start a riot in Lafayette Square so he could hold a Bible upside down in front of the president's church, uh, St. John's Church, not this president's church, but the Church of Presidents. Uh, but yeah, it, it, this is another example of sort of the 75-25 world that Donald Trump and Donald Trump's Republican Party lives in. Again, if you look at every single poll, what they try to do is they try to brush past George Floyd being murdered. They try to brush past uh, the shooting yesterday in Wisconsin. They try to ignore the peaceful protesters there. And then, yes, they find the people who are undermining the legacy of John Lewis who resort to violence. It's that simple. It's that simple. They try to push aside things that are uncomfortable for them and just find uh, the worst uh, actions of people and say, look, white people in the suburbs. They're coming to get you next. Black people get shot in the back. And Donald Trump's message is, watch out, white people. They're coming for your beautiful American suburbia dream. Lots of luck with that message, fella. It doesn't sell. No, Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.